So I will be talking about teens today. Um, thanks for coming. Over the last month, we've watched hundreds of thousands of teenagers organize and participate in massive rallies across the country. They've done this in the face of both pain and serious frustration that adults have utterly failed them on something very, very basic. That's keeping schools safe. Adults who have been unable to achieve common sense gun control following mass shooting after mass shooting are now placing their hands in this younger generation. But isn't this like the same generation that made Tide Pods, eating Tide Pods, a viral sensation in recent weeks? Like how much do you really understand today's young people and how much do you even care? For most old people, the answer is very little. They don't care, but you should care. Like, the, this is the generation that will create massive change in the world over the next 50 years. And for us to be able to like teach and influence them as they begin to make those changes, it's, it's super important that we understand them. So if you allow, allow me to be your guide, I'd like to tell you a little bit about today's teenager. But first, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Corey Levy. I'm in my mid-20s. And although I'll be using the word we while I present this information, teens consider me a little old. Um, so I've worked like years to stay on top of this generation. As Jesse mentioned, um, I started a company called After School while I was a teenager, um, while I was 19. Um, uh, After School is one of the largest teenage social networks in the, uh, in the US, millions of users um, who are currently in high school. I'm also on the board of DoSomething.org, which is a nonprofit, a digital platform powering social change for nearly 6 million young people. Um, and today, I'm going to help you understand this generation a bit better. So um, uh, over the last few weeks, I've been interviewing teenagers. And with the help from teens across the country, I've made a list of, of 10 things that you, you probably don't understand um, uh, today about, about teenagers. Um, so we'll get started. The first point is we're heavily addicted to our phones, but we don't know our phone numbers, which you know the first part, you, you probably already know. The second part was, was a little surprising to me. And, and how is this possible? Obviously, you know, like teens grew up um, uh, with, with iPhones and Androids, with smartphones. They're, they're more reliant on them than, than, than ever before. Um, but teenagers, they care more about like usernames. Um, what's their Snapchat name? What's their Instagram handle? Um, they don't really care about phone numbers. And when they meet new people for the first time, they're exchanging these handles, not like, hey, what's your number? It's like, hey, um, you know, add me on Snapchat or, or, or follow me on Instagram. They don't use iMessage or SMS because mom and dad can, can, can have access to that. They're, they're texting on Snapchat and, 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 and Instagram DM, and they probably never, um, ne never use this thing uh, the way it was invented, um, which is they've probably never, never uh, used, used the actual phone. They've never used an alarm clock. Um, they, they just use, use their phone for that. And, and doorbells, they're like, what's that? They're totally unnecessary. Um, uh, and here's how like two teenagers that, that I interviewed um, kind of described their connections to their phone. Teenagers are digital natives. They don't live in a mobile-friendly world. They're a mo mobile-only generation. Um, another person who's a senior in high school said, parents just don't understand why we move from thing to thing so quickly. It's not that we have a short attention span. It's our generation's ability to filter through information more quickly because we just get bombarded with it so much. Um, this is point number two. Facebook is lame. Um, uh, we love streaks. Uh, teens think Facebook is, is for their grandparents. It's old, clunky, and invasive. And in fact, it's one of the reasons that, that, we, um, that we developed our app uh, after school, which helps teens connect and share with other students at their high school. Um, millions of users. We have like a matching feature that's connected over, uh, that's been used over a billion times with a B. Um, uh, we, we just like released a compliment feature, and in the last 24 hours, like hundreds of thousands of teenagers have have like complimented each other with that. And um, what we've seen at, uh, with with after school is that teens use us because we're like a teen-only social network to um, you know come come to, c use the product to to, uh, to post things that like they wouldn't post on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram because there is an anonymous uh, feature to it. Um, we also connect teenagers with. Uh, Crisis text line when they are in need need of help. Crisis text line is a, a teen hotline that you can text 741-741. And uh, instead of like calling a hotline, you can text with a trained crisis counselor. We've connected over 100,000 teenagers to crisis text line via, um, via our app. 
Um, but, but probably one, one of the most popular ways that, that, that teens communicate is, is snaps. Raise your hand if you know what a streak is. About half the audience. Um, uh, teens are like obsessed with snap streaks. And a little bit of what a snap streak is, is when you send direct snaps back and forth um, for consecutive days. So if me and you snapped each other today, tomorrow, and the next day, we would have had a, a, a three-day snap streak. And the longer you go without breaking the chain, the longer your, your, communi uh, the longer your streak is. And teenagers today have like streaks that, that have lasted not just weeks or months, but years. Um, uh, snap rewards these longer streaks with like special emojis. So if you get a hundred streak, you get like the little hundred emoji, um, or like a mountain emoji for like an extremely, extremely uh, uh, long streak. And there's there's nothing more devastating to a teenager than like losing that streak. When they go off to camp for like a week or a month, they'll give their snap password to a friend um, just so they can they can keep their their streaks going. Um, uh, here's how a 16 year old from Brooklyn um, put it. Streaks are a big part of social acceptance. Having more streaks makes you feel w way more popular. He added, I think streaks are a way of showing how many people you talk to. It's like a, a score. If you see your friends have a lot of streaks, you're like, whoa, that guy or girl knows a lot of people. It shows their social status to see how many streaks they have. Um, so snap streaks is something that is incredibly popular amongst teenagers. And teens also, um, also love, love, love Instagram. Instagram, Instagram Live is particularly popular. Um, this allows them to connect with their, with their followers like in, in, in their audience in real time. And another like, uh, uh, important trend that's popped up is, is something called a Finsta. Raise your hand if you've heard of a Finsta. One per two people in the audience. Um, a Finsta stands for a fake Instagram. So teenagers will have um, uh, two Instagrams set up. One is their main Instagram, and that's where their parents, their siblings, their cousins, their friends will follow them. And, and then they have a second Instagram called a Finsta, which stands for fake Instagram. And that's where they um, uh, just have their like top you know, friends, no parents, no teachers, no cousins um, that, 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 that follow them. And uh, yeah, a 17-year-old student I talked to described her Finsta. She goes, on my Finsta, it's the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's the more multifaceted version of me. Um, and you know, many teens are aware that like potential employers and colleges will, will have access to their their main Instagram, so they create a, create this second Instagram called a Fensta to keep you know some of the information private. Um, uh, a 16 year old I interviewed said, uh, uh, "People on my IG are always doing Instagram lives, usually for attention. Something I do unconsciously is pull out Snapchat anytime anything interesting is happening, especially around New York City. A majority of my videos on my phone are in Snap Memories." Anytime I take a video, it's with Snap for sure, just because it's easy to share. So teens today aren't using like the default camera on their phones. They aren't using the, the default Apple or Google camera when they want to take a photo. They're going to Snapchat, taking a photo, and then saving it, and then debating whether or not to send it out, um, which, was, which was surprising to me. Um, point number three, we're modern day Shakespeare's. So teenagers are creating like you know, new language every single day. Um, and you know, we, we usually start copying them uh, uh, eventually. So I want to share like some examples of what teens are saying today. A M O S C is an acronym that kids are using to uh, basically just means add me on Snapchat. Bad means good, surprising. Bra means bro. Um, cringe is when something is like gross or awkward or uncomfortable. Um, curve or swerve sometimes is 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 to reject someone. Don't at me. He's like, don't call me out or don't disagree with me. Um, finna is like, I'm fixing to or, or, or gonna. Finsta, which I just described, is a fake Instagram. Um, GOAT, acronym that stands for greatest of all time. Gucci, not the brand, it means good. Um, I'm weak or dead is like, that's so funny, that's hilarious. KMS is like the new FML. Um, savage is, is you know, bold or strong. Um, low key, if you want to say something low key, it's like secretive. Um, and high key, that means it's not secretive and it's something that everyone should know. Plug, it's someone that can provide them with something. Shipped, it's not like shipping a product, but more like a relationship. Like Alex and Sarah should be shipped off together, it means they should be in a relationship. Um, straight fire is like good or trendy. Um, to describe your fr friend group, they're using both squad and fam. Um, and uh, to be bitter is salty. Um, 
straight fires, like that's, that's also another, another term they use for good or trendy. And then sus um, is a term they're using for something that's like suspicious. So um, uh, you, know, you might hear uh, a news reporter in a few months saying like what Facebook did was so sus. That's, that's a little, little example. Um, so this won't be on the midterm, but you should uh, 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 definitely know uh, what, what teens are, are, the words that they're saying. But, but you know, like teen, teens are, 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 are moving beyond words. Um, they've, they've made popular an array of like new communication techniques, um, uh, emojis, memes, gifts to express their emotions quickly. Um, if you look at any teen's text conversation, you'll immediately notice the difference with adult text. Teens use like tons of emojis, GIFs, memes, and um, uh, this 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 makes like complete sense. They're they're used to like a flood of information and have be, have become like really really good at processing quickly and conveying ideas quickly. And it's much more efficient for them to use like an emoji or a GIF than like four or ten words um, to describe what they what they want to communicate. What they want to communicate. Um, and teens they don't get why um, why you are so close close minded. Teens think that adults are closed-minded when it comes to things like same-sex marriage, different sexual orientation, mixed-race dating, um, and this makes sense when you consider they're part of the like the most racially diverse um, generation in America. Forty-eight percent of them are non-white. Eighty-one percent of them have different uh, uh, have friends that are that are that are that are a different race, and thirty-five percent of them have dated um, uh, a different race as well. One, one teen put it, most kids like myself, and especially ones in urban environments, care about the rights of themselves, but also people that don't look like them or share similar attributes. And that's the reason why we, we actually go out and protest at City Hall, because it's hard for adults who are stuck in their ways to see when change is necessary. This one uh, uh, may or may not be surprising to you, but gamers are heroes, not geeks. Teens still love like their movie stars, musicians, athletes, etc. But but who can be a celebrity has changed um, quite some time. Um, they idolize vloggers like Jake Paul, who has nearly 15 million YouTube subscribers, whose videos have, are being viewed billions of times a month. Um, I was lucky enough to to be one of his first investors in his management company when he was 17 years old. Um, they follow entrepreneurs like Elon Musk and Gary Vaynerchuk and Peter Thiel and and, and Mark Cuban and Tim Cook. And perhaps, like the most interesting thing, um, uh, they've made esports figures their heroes. Um, esports stadiums are being built across the country, in Vegas, and Houston, and Dallas. Um, uh, and you know, pro video game players have these massive followings, like major corporate sponsorships, and they compete in these huge arenas uh, and make way more money than like regular regular athletes. There's a 26-year-old named Ninja. Um, raise your hand if you've heard of Ninja. Two people um, has, has heard of Ninja. He's he's the most popular gamer on Twitch, um, uh, and earns more than half a million dollars a month uh, 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 just by playing video games. Um, Fortnite is a massive game that's super popular amongst teenagers. Uh, Ninja just played Fortnite in front of 600,000 people viewing it at the same time. Drake, um, the rapper, came on and played with him. Um, uh, Juju Smith-Schuster. Steelers foot, uh, uh, wide receiver came on and played with him. Um, this is something that is that is that is just at the, at the very very beginning and continuing to to, to blow up. Um, one team put it: while athletes and movie stars are still famous, the idolization of entrepreneurs like Gary um, and YouTube vloggers and influencers has completely changed the perception. The fact that an entrepreneur came out with a with a shoe and sold it out to kids in, in seconds is unreal. High schoolers are paying more and more attention to esports, and so is the world. For example, Fortnite, where Ninja, the best player in the world, played with Drake, Juju Smith-Schuster, and then a rapper, Travis Scott, as I mentioned earlier, had over 600,000 people viewing it um, uh, at, at the same time. Um, fashion is still really big amongst uh, today's young people. Streetwear um, uh, reigns supreme. Teens today differentiate themselves in many ways, and when it, when it comes to fashion, Teens increasingly choose like streetwear brands like Supreme um, and Vans over mainstream brands like like Nike. Um, Supreme has this like particular kind of outsider appeal for teenagers, even though you know the brand launched in, in 1994 in New York City as a as a skateboarding and clothing company. Um, it caters to the skate and hip hop cultures, but and to just youth cultures in, in, in general, and it's become an absolute obsession for for, for teenagers. Um, when teens hear about 
kind of a new uh, shoe uh, or product launch on Reddit or other social media, hundreds of teens will line up in New York um, to get their hands on the product before it sells out. And a lot of teens are entrepreneurs. They'll buy it and then immediately flip it for um, uh, uh, extreme markups. And, and big finance is starting to pay, pay attention to this. The Carl Group invested in Supreme and valued the company at over, over a billion dollars. We have no interest in working at big companies. So most teens have, have very, little working, uh, very little interest in working uh, for major corporations, even you know, tech ones like, like Amazon and Facebook. They, they've seen their parents and older siblings kind of struggle in the workforce and become you know, unhappy despite these high paying jobs. Uh, teens today are more entrepreneurial than, than older generations and have like, less patience for bureaucratic work environments um, and crave more independence. 72% of them um, said they wanted to start a business one day, uh, which is, which is pretty, pretty fascinating. Number nine, you've left us with a big mess to clean up. Teens have grown up watching you know, reports of, of a broken political system, devastating climate change, you know, mass shootings at schools, homegrown terrorism, and ongoing war. It's no surprise that like 68% of, of this uh, generation feel the U.S. is headed in the wrong direction, and 44% are worried about the, the way that things are going. This was more than any other generation um, uh, interviewed. And, and um, you know, lastly, teens think that, that we'll have a, a bigger impact than, than you think. Um, it's easy for adults to think that teens today are, are pretty reckless. Uh, much of what we read or hear in the media focuses on the, on the negatives, um, like teens trying to pull off crazy stunts on YouTube, which I'm sure you have seen, or teens infatuation with the jewel. Raise your hand if you've heard of the jewel. One person again. Um, the Jewel is a, a sleek e-cigarette that can be like used indoors without attracting attention. Um, uh, and don't get me wrong, like the, the massive popularity of this uh, Jewel of e-cigarettes is something that, 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 that we should be concerned about. Um, but uh, uh, the Jewel is something that is uh, massively popular amongst, amongst teenagers. Um, but, but these types of behaviors are really not much different than you know, the uh, kind of what, what we were like in prior generations. And, and one teen described it as, you know, just like the generations before them, teens will always want to rebel against the norm. We're, we're not worse, it's just that you see it more because everything is being recorded. So focusing on these, these, these negatives makes us lose sight of the bigger picture. What thousands of hours of kind of observing teens has shown me, what many studies show, is that today's teens, um, they have a strong worth ethic and balance forward thinking with kind of old school traditional values. Um, so when, when adults think about this new generation, we should be open-minded. Teens are, 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 are multifaceted. Um, and uh, you know, it's, gonna, it's gonna, gonna take some time for us to like stick with a name for this next generation. But when I asked teenagers, like, tell me if you could name your generation, what would you name it? Here were some of the responses that I got. You know, the viral generation, the founders, I generation, um, uh, uh, digital natives, Gen Mobile, Generation Next, the Connected Generation, um, et cetera. So these were some of the names. These are some of the names that, that I got when I when I asked a bunch of teenagers. You know, how would you, how, if you could name it, what, name your generation, what would it be? But but regardless of, of what they're called, um, I think one thing is really clear, and that is that we shouldn't under underestimate today's teenagers. Like yes, you know, they, they use phones in different ways that. That, that we probably would have never imagined. They idolize these eSports stars that we've never heard of, and they can be pretty quirky, but, but they're already showing us that they're gonna step up and tackle like major challenges in ways that, that other generations um, haven't. Last weekend's like March for Our Lives was, was one example that was organized by teenagers. It brought over 800,000 people um, uh, to Washington, D.C., and countless more uh, uh, to hundreds of sister marches across the country. This is more than um, the inaugural Women's March, the, 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 um, the Million Man March, and, and you know, the Dem uh, uh, what else? The March on, on, on Washington for Jobs and Freedom. Um, 800,000 was the biggest march uh, 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 ever. And you know, today's teens, they've, they have energy, they have passion, and they have a no-nonsense attitude about fixing the problems that, that, they've, that they've inherited. And if what they've accomplished in the, in the last month is, is any kind of indication, we, we old people are in pretty good hands. Um, so thank you for listening to these, these 10 points. Hopefully you, you learned 
a little something today in, in the 20 or 30 minutes of time that I had. Um, and I'm happy to, to answer any questions that you have on today's generation of teenagers. So I know that online bullying is a, is a kind of uniquely bad problem for this generation, and I was kind of curious uh, what your social network is doing to mitigate that problem. Yeah, so online bullying is, is a, a very, very serious problem for um, pretty much any big social network. Um, one of the things that, that we do um, is proactive moderation. So most social networks do reactive moderation. When, they, uh, when someone posts a message to Twitter or to Facebook, it gets seen by everyone. If it is a, a, a negative message, it may get t uh, taken down after the fact. Um, with after school, we do proactive moderation. So when someone writes a message, it has to get seen by moderation in order for it to get seen by others. Um, so that's, that's you know, one of the steps that, that, that we take um, uh, in after school, and we hope that other social networks will follow, which is increased moderation. Um, and um, yeah, uh, what's up in the back? All right, so streaks uh, definitely seems like a pretty ingenious gamification uh, yes. to encourage more usage and so forth. Uh, any other examples of those sorts of gamification elements, whether uh, in your social network or others that you've seen? Yeah, so so in, in other social networks, you know, obviously likes is is something that, that, that teens care a lot about. One of the things that I've noticed is that when a teenager posts something on Instagram, they will wait for like five or 10 minutes, and if it doesn't get some threshold number of likes, they'll delete the post. Um, so, so, so likes is something that um, is, is incredibly uh, uh, important to them. Um, uh, and you know, snap streaks is probably the, the, the best example of gamification that I've seen um, over the last you know, several years of following this generation. Um, if Snap didn't have Snap streaks, I mean, I think teens would, would uh, use it way, way, way less. And best friends, they have another thing uh, called best friends. I don't know if y'all know what Snap best friends are, but um, uh, if you snap someone a bunch, they'll have a little emoji next to, um, next to that person's name. And each emoji may mean that y'all are each best friends with each other. One of you is best, if it's a wink, it's one of you is best friends with the other person, but the other person is not best friends with you. Um, so Snap has probably done uh, the best job of, of, of gamification, and those are, those are two examples of that. Thanks. Uh, you mentioned that 70% of uh, teens want to have uh, their own business, if I remember correctly. Yeah. I wonder if this um, maybe is related. Uh, what do they think of colleges, college debt, and non-traditional education and things? Do they also think differently than like people did in the past? I'm sorry, can you, can you speak so up? So I wonder uh, what, what, so that I had recently that so many people have college debt that there's basically there's a prognosis that of people who are freshmen this year, 40% yeah. would default on student loans eventually. Right. So I wonder if students also have some very interesting ideas of like how to not end up being in debt and maybe do something different for college education. Yeah, so I think, uh, 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 most teens are still following that traditional path of going to high school, graduating, going to college, incurring this debt, um, uh, and then quickly realizing when they graduate that they weren't trained properly to enter you know, uh, 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 the workforce. So I don't think we're, we're there yet. Um, uh, I hope one day that, that, that we do get there where teens realize that you know, paying $200,000 over the course of four years for you know, random X degree may not, you know, mean that they're going to get a high-paying job to pay that off. Um, so I think uh, you know, teens are so uh, uh, they care so much about the, themselves and their friends that they they don't really know much about um, uh, you know what what that means, um, what college means to, and, and what going in debt means. So, yeah, I, I, not yet. I have one more question. Do you think there's a big difference between uh, high schoolers and middle schoolers, or they they use social media in a similar way today? So high schoolers and middle schoolers are completely different. Um, uh, you know, some parents don't let their middle schoolers you know get get Instagram or Snapchat until they reach a certain age. Um, some of the, the the middle schoolers like they're using Musically. Um, they're, they're starting their own slime businesses on Instagram where they make slime and sell it. Um, uh, uh, middle schoolers are uh, I've seen like a bunch of entrepreneurial characteristics, um, but but don't 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 know them super well. But but uh, uh, but yeah, I do see pretty big differences from middle school, high school, and and college in terms of of, of network use. I have heard about the detachment from tech overall is the new trend. Would you say that it's not a trend for teenagers, but for you, older you, generation? What, what was the trend? A detachment from technology. Oh, detachment from technology. Yeah. So. 
Um, I think teens are they're, they're very self-aware that they're addicted to their phones. Um, they, they, you know, if you go, go to a, a high school and watch people during lunch, you know, like everyone will be like this. Um, uh, yesterday, I was with a group of, of 80 teenagers and we were looking at their snap scores. Snap score means, you know, when I send one snap message, I get a point. When I receive a snap message, I get two point, uh, you know, an additional point. One teenager, and this was like kind of like the average, had over 600,000 points, um, which means that, uh, the average was like, you know, she had her Snapchat for a year or two or three or whatever it was. She was sending 14 snaps an hour, 24 hours a day. Um, so I think teens are very self-aware that, that uh, uh, you know, that they're addicted to their phones, but they don't really care. Like they're, I think when you when you go to college, um, that's maybe when you start to figure out, you know, how do I manage my time differently and how can I be more um, uh, uh, productive. But today's teenagers are uh, uh, pretty much uh, like this all of the time. What do you think teenagers' perception of VR is today? Like particular? teenagers' perception of VR. Yeah. I think some of the like uh, you know the, the longer tail of, 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 of teenagers are, are super interested in it, um, uh, uh, and I think uh, they'll be like the early adopters to to the technology. But you know the devices are expensive, so um, it's kind of tough for them to get their hands on it. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think the younger generations generally set those trends, and I think um, uh, VR will will be really big. Uh, amongst them. I think there's a, a question to the right of you. Um, I wanted to know a bit more about the after school app and how you think you won over their trust to post things like you showed us and yeah. also like how you convinced them that it's worth their time to spend on the app. Yeah so the first question on how we kind of uh, went, went over their trust I think uh, we built a product for teenagers. Um, most people don't do that. Most people just build a product for everyone. Um, uh, and so our product was built for, like just for them. Um, so, so they know when they like download the app that there's a, a, a verification process. They need to get past a few number of things to kind of prove that they're, they're a teenager and that they attend that high school. So there's a level of, of, of safety that they feel like when I'm joining this network, I had to jump through all these hoops to like prove I was a student. Um, uh, and so I think they, they like that. You know, one high schooler was telling me that they posted some photo on Facebook and it was like to impress a girl and the grandmother commented like oh my god you're so cute and that was like the last time he used Facebook um, uh, so I think people uh, teenagers are attracted to, to after school because it's just for them and there are no grandparents there are no you know teachers on the platform um, and it's a place where they can just you know feel comfortable um, so yeah yeah, the other question is, like, how did you convince them it's worth their time? Like, they have a bunch of other stuff going on in high school. Yeah, um, that's a great question. How do we convince them that it's worth their time? I don't have, like, a, 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 a perfect answer to that question. Like, our, our app's grown kind of 100% through, through word of mouth. I think there's, there's probably, like, a really big demand needed for teenagers to be in this place where it's just them and their friends. We all had that, or at least I had that when, when I was growing up. I had Facebook to go to. and. Um, when I was in high school, and there were no, you know, there were no teachers or parents on Facebook. It was just me and my, my high school buddies. Um, so I think there was there was a big demand to create a space where it's just them and their friends. Um, uh, and you know, Snapchat kind of helps a little bit with that. Although parents are are joining Snap uh, a, a lot right now. But um, but yeah. So I think just just creating that Thank space you. just for them. Yeah, I just had another question. Did they say anything about when they think like Snapchat's going to die out or Instagram is going to? Yeah, so I think, I think there's this, uh, uh, you know, this kind of the circle that we see where you know Facebook they started with the college audience, their audience kind of grew up, uh, uh, and then they started to build for like a wider audience, and then they neglected their original audience, they neglected you know young people, um, as they wanted to just gain more users and get bigger numbers for for you know investors and and their business. Um, so I think we're starting to see a little bit of that right now with Instagram and Snapchat where their parents and their grandparents are starting to join those platforms that will drive the teens out to something different. Um, uh, teens' response to Instagram was, well, great, if my grandparents and parents are on this, I'm just going to create this second Instagram that they're not going to know about. Um, uh, with Snapchat, it's a little bit harder to do. Um, uh, but with Snap's new update, uh, if you all are familiar with that, that's like lower the engagement, I imagine, massively amongst teenagers. And the ones that I talk to are like, yeah, with the new update, like I don't use Discover anymore. I don't, you know, they're on it less. So I'm not sure that was the, uh, the best update for Snapchat with respect to teenagers. 
So how do we prevent the parents or grandparents to come to after school? Yeah, so how do we prevent the old people from, <laughs> from infiltrating our, our network? Uh, basically, yeah. it's a verification process. So uh -huh. um, when you log into the app, you show us your like, school ID or, uh -huh. ver or verify in a, in, a, in a certain way. And uh, that's similar to how you know, Facebook, when they started, you had to verify with your .edu address um, uh, to prove that you're a college student. We do, we do things similar. So, um, okay, so, um, so compare with this, so I feel that Google is so old. Do any of your, uh, how, how many you know, usage of your audience actually use Google? How many uh, actually use Google? Well, yeah. they, they, they love Google because it helps them with their homework. Uh -huh. um, uh, but, but yeah, I'm not, I'm, uh, uh, you know, it's the default you know, web browser uh -huh. um, um, for them. So I think they're using it from you know, just probably how, 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 or at least how, how I used it in high school, which was like, if I want to know anything, I get to, okay. get to go to Google. It helps me with my homework. Okay. Um, and that's probably, I would imagine, what they attribute Google to most is like the, the thing that helps me with my homework. Okay. What's the one thing that you believe about teens that nobody else believes? That nobody else believes? Well, I think teenagers, um, uh, I think adults think teens are rebels, and I think that, that they're, uh, 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 you know, too addicted to their phones, they're going to mess up the whole, you know, they're going to mess up the whole next generation. And I disagree with that. I think that, that um, you know, today's teenagers are more capable than ever to, like, make change. Um, and, and we're seeing, like, examples of that with this, you know, March for Our Lives um, uh, uh, demonstration. Um, just to say that, like, a few teenagers planned this massive rally. Um, you would have never thought that was possible five years ago or ten years ago, but with social media, um, with Twitter, with Facebook, with Instagram, et cetera, you're able to, to uh, you know, one kid in a school is able to make this, this, this massive change. So I think this is, like, the first really big example of this, but we're going to see so much more of this um, in, in the days, weeks, and, 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 and years to come. So. Uh, and I imagine if you interviewed a bunch of old people, they'd be like, no, nah, they're definitely not. But that's uh, one thing I disagree with. I was wondering if you could speak more to like um, the method of collecting this information and if you have any tips of like that you've learned from uh, methods that worked well versus others that um, might have been misleading, if you can. To collect this information about teenagers? Yes. Yeah, so, so that's, that's a great question. Um, uh, you know, teenagers have different personas. It's, they're around their friends. It's one, one way they act. When they're around adults, they act incredibly different. Um, so it's really challenging to kind of get um, uh, real truth, uh, tr true information about teenagers. So a couple of ways we do it is one, you know, we luckily have this, this app that, that millions of teenagers are communicating on. So we're able to like, you know, pick up trends and language that they're using just from, you know, the posts that, the, that, they, that they write. Additionally, we have like a bunch of ambassadors across America. And uh, we, we kind of asked them to help us, you know, hey, text this to your friend, text these questions to your friends, um, you know, take a screenshot of uh, the, the people you follow, uh, the people you subscribe to on YouTube so we can kind of see, like, who the, who the big vloggers are. Um, uh, so, but it's, but it's really tough, you know, sometimes we'll get the, you know, adult answers from teenagers and they'll be like, you know, a capital letter, you know, they'll, they'll, speak, they'll speak very formally and then other times, We'll get, um, uh, uh, you know, let's see, I think I maybe put, um, well, I guess I capitalized most of the things, but like the way that kids were replying to me, you could tell it was like they're doing this, like they're texting one of their friends. It's like totally in incorrect grammar, uh, misspellings everywhere, um, and that's kind of one of the indications of like, all right, this person's being really real versus if they were typing like real professionally. But, but uh, yeah, it's hard. Um, it's really, really hard. Um, people are biased, um, but yeah, in short, a couple of things that we do is one, we use our own platform, and two, we have a group of teen ambassadors that will go and ask the questions for us, so it's a teenager talking to a teen, not an old person talking to a teen. So one more question, what happens after graduation to the after school account? For after school, what happens after graduation is they're kicked out. Um, eventually we'll build a college product, but to keep, uh, uh, you know, uh, to keep uh, the, the network just high schoolers, we have to kick them out, so we've kicked out, you know, million plus users. One last question. Um, Do you see any, so you said that there was some teen entrepreneurial spirit in the, among the teenagers. Some yeah. of them sent lines. That's probably why my daughter is going through slimes. <laughs> only eight years old. Yeah. Um, did you see any like promising kind of entrepreneurial uh, spirit, like some ideas kind of popping up from teenagers? 
Yeah, so, so her question was, um, you know, she has an eight-year-old daughter that's making slime and selling it, and uh, is this generation, do, do I see any ideas uh, from, from teenagers that um, are, are, are trying to make change? And, you know, I see it every day. It's, it's, it's really cool. There's, there's one 18-year-old uh, that I'm working with that's I'm trying to make vegan ch chicken nuggets to make, uh, uh, you know, uh, us all be vegetarians and trying to be like a team brand and make being being a, a vegetarian cool, um, uh, and yeah, so that's just one example of a of a teenager being like this is a real problem, um, and you know he's taking matters into his own hands and trying to create the the vegan version of McDonald's, um, uh, and uh, I've seen that you know dozens of times, so it's inspiring. Um, thank you all for listening, and hopefully you're a little bit more knowledgeable on today's teenager.